Lady K is banged up. She has been for a while. She's still sporting factory paint after all these years. Long distance racing, club racing, two full lengths of the Erie Canal, loads of salt water, dock scrapes, lock scrapes, and raft off scuffs. She's ready for some new paint. I've wanted to paint this boat for years now, and I have to admit I've been lost in the options. There's all grip and bright side and poly this and ethylene that. Two part, one part, no part epoxy. Figuring out boat paint is a wild ride and it takes a lot of time. So two things. I'm gonna tell you what I decided to do and ask you for advice and to pick a color because we have some issues with color too. Here we go. The first option I considered was all grip. This is the stuff everyone talks about for sort of professional level, but DIY projects. And because I have to roll and tip my paint job, which sounds more complicated than it actually is, all grip could be a winner because it's pretty good at that. All grip is known to give a very hard finish, like rock solid paint, like your car, that should stand up to the bumps and dings the best out of all the options. The problem is I run into this I've never painted a boat before. I've trolled the forums and read everything I can on the internet for years, and I've followed people's sort of build threads on painting their boats, and the All Grip folks do amazing work, but I don't find it very entry level. It's all really complicated. If you follow an All Grip paint thread, wow. And maybe it's just me overcomplicating it because I definitely do that. And it all bogged me down in wanting to get an absolutely perfect paint job out of this experience, and that's what kept me from actually putting paint to brush or roller to hull. In the All Grip video on YouTube, they explain all the products I need to buy, how to mix them, and how to use each one and in which order. So that's an option, sure, but it scares me, but it's there. Next, I bounced over to the other crowd favorite, Interlux Brightside. This is much more simple. A one part paint, no mixing, no messing around with all that stuff. And they say it can hold a wet edge, and I understand that to be important. It said that while painting a boat, especially a 36 foot long boat, starting at the bow, if you stop for too long to say, move the ladder over or top up the paint tray, the paint edge you left can dry slightly. And if that happens, you'll forever have a visible line there when the paint job is done. And since I don't want to have to build scaffolding all the way around the boat or rush through the painting process really fast, this thing kind of scares me, this wet edge stuff. But they say bright side is very easy to apply and it works well for the roll and tip method, which is what I'm going to do. What bright side definitely did for me was sell me on a one part polyurethane paint. Um, they are said to be really easy to do for do-it-yourself people. And that other discovery they led me to was that I need this paint job to be imperfect. If I consider this to be my first paint job ever, which it is, and set my expectations to match, this whole project is a lot less intimidating for me. And considering it the first ever paint job, I'll probably want to keep the cost down, won't I? Because if it's cheap enough, I might be willing to repaint the boat after a couple years with all the experience that I learned from painting it the first time. My third option, and I'm leaning heavily in this direction, is Pettit. Pettit Paints and their Easy Poxy product. This looks right up my alley from all my YouTube research and reading threads, primarily because all those online ravings say pretty much the same thing. This is extremely user-friendly, extremely easy, excellent for first-time boat painters like me. And Pettit's not paying me to say any of this stuff. I wish they were, because then it would solve a lot of other problems. This video shows some Pettit guys painting a little boat, and they really do make it look extremely easy. And the finished product they come up with is exceptional. You need the paint, the thinner, and that's about it. Obviously, I need to sand the heck out of my boat, and it's finally sunny outside, so that will begin soon, probably this week. First, I understand I should use a wax remover and scour the hull with it to remove any contaminants, and then sand, and then wash it again. Then, fair out any imperfections in the hull and start priming with a high-build primer. I won't be sanding all the way down to the barrier coat either. I'm intending to apply paint to the existing paint or gel coat after sanding it 
fairly aggressively, cleaning it aggressively, and priming it aggressively. My understanding is the paint will stick fine if I follow that process. If you have any experience or comments, uh, or you want to help me along my way here, please leave a comment below so that you can guide me. The next hurdle, I'm in Canada, so I can't just call up Pettit Paints down south and have them custom mix me a color and run with it. I'm going to have to buy paint off the shelf, which leads me to having to pick from an original, unoriginal color, a boring color. And Lady K is more than some off-the-shelf color to me. She needs to pop. She needs to be sort of loud, like me. I have considered painting her just black, which would work, but the alternative is some sort of blue, but a Bahamas blue, sort of blue-green, but more blue than green, or very light blue. Here's Pettit's color chart, and they certainly have black, so that would be easy. The bikini blue they have is too off-the-shelf blue for me. The seafoam green I like, but it's too green. I need something in between those two colors. And you aren't supposed to pigment mix this stuff with like pigment from Home Depot, so that's kind of out. What Pettit says I can do is order a gallon of Pettit white and pour in a quart of bikini blue until I get the color I want. But that's expensive. We're talking about $1,000 worth of paint here. What do you guys think? Should I suck it up and just paint it seafoam green? I mean, that's loud enough. It has the pop. It does everything I want it to do, though it's not blue enough. Or do I just paint it black? I like the idea of a black boat. Or do I switch brands entirely and find an off-the-shelf color from somebody else that I actually like? It's $1,000 worth of paint either way. I will, of course, be taking you guys with me on this journey. You're coming to the boatyard with me soon for sanding and fairing and painting and everything. So whatever color you pick for Lady K better work because you're going to have to live with it too.